recognizing that language points to bias, that oftentimes that bias has been inherited and that conscious or subconscious, we have the opportunity to either perpetuate that bias or to break it. And our hope here within this channel and within our restaurant and within our team is to break the bias. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazaness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to our channel. I'm so excited that you are here. My name is Katherine Hubert. I'm the owner here at Shazaness, and today, we are digging into terms that you may not have already known are insulting to humans with disabilities. I feel like we are gonna need a catchier title than that probably as the caption for this video, but that's the gist of it, is wanting to explore terms that are part of kind of everyday language and use that get tossed around that you may or may not realize actually have some history or association with disability and in a negative connotation. So before we get into those, we're just gonna break down briefly why that's important and why this is something that we are talking about. We've talked about on our channel some before the danger of disability euphemisms. We've talked about if it's still okay to use the term special needs or not. You can view both of those videos here on our channel. But language is a really powerful tool. It's how we communicate and express ourselves to other people and make ourselves known and understood in the world and words and language hold a lot of power so not all of disability advocacy and rights is based out of language there are also unspoken bias prejudices etc that factor into disability injustice and then justice but Language is a really important part and piece of the puzzle, but we want to be a community and a business that is not just focused on changing language, but that is also focused on addressing what is underlying the message or the context or the understanding of that language. So we wanna do both. We wanna change the bias that is causing the language in the first place, and then we want to address the language and make sure that it's accurately reflecting the, the stance, the viewpoint, the perspective, etc. So that's kind of the sum of it. Words are important. I think that that's something that we all know and that we can agree on, but there's actually a lot of education and understanding that can and needs to take place around words that are used in our vocabulary to make sure that we are using them in an appropriate context and that we understand what they mean. So we're gonna dive into that here. We've talked before some about terms. I mean, this is going to be a little bit of a recap and then we're going to dive into some words and some expressions that we haven't talked about here before. But just as a reminder, we discourage the use of differently abled, special needs, unless a person with a disability specifies that they prefer to describe themselves as a person with special needs. That's the caveat there. But in general practice, we discourage the use of special needs handy capable, challenged. Those are all words and expressions that have gained some momentum in the past years that have been used a lot in our educational systems, trying to shift away from using the word disability or disabled itself. And we want to, to kind of remove that from our vocabulary. The reason being there is nothing wrong with having a disability or being disabled. There's nothing wrong with that word stating something in neutral language for what it is, is not only perfectly acceptable, but it's also encouraged. So by using disability language, disability, a person with a disability, a disabled person, either, you know, both of those are acceptable. 
we kind of strip away this idea that having a disability is bad or it means you're less fortunate, you're needy, et cetera, which is not something that is fair or right to place onto another person. And it's also not true. So that's kind of where all of this is coming from. Click pause. Please don't skip this part. We are trying to grow our YouTube to 1,000 subscribers by May. The reason for that is that we love making content. We want more people to see our content. We think it's good and we would love to get paid for it. So having an increase in our subscribers is the best way for us to do that. If you don't already subscribe to us and you like our content, if you would subscribe, if you do already subscribe, please make sure as you're watching videos, if you're enjoying them, that you hit the like button and that you also leave us comments. All of those things, subscriptions, likes, comments, just notifies YouTube that people are interested and are engaging in our content and then they'll start pushing it out in front of more eyeballs, which ultimately helps us and our whole community. We're gonna dive into some additional and some newly discussed on this platform words that insult people with disabilities and they may be things that you are aware of and that you've forgotten or that you've never heard of before. The first one they're gonna talk about is labeling someone as crazy or insane or saying that something is crazy or insane. This points back to a broader mental health standpoint and viewpoint, saying that something is hysterical, that's so crazy, this person's insane. That has become a pretty accepted, I think, and widely used vocabulary, but does still kind of point back to this idea and theory that people who are navigating their own mental health, that that makes them unfit for society, that crazy and insane are something that are uncontrollable and they're bad. It just kind of continues to attach negative stigma or stereotype around mental health in general. And while that's not disability specific, there are a lot of times where people conflate or cross over those two things. So just being mindful of places where disability intersects with the mental health field and then increasing some mindfulness around how language in both of those areas is addressed to again help bring down the negative connotations or ideas that we have around mental health and disability and making education opportunities conversation more accessible to everyone. So that's the first one crazy, insane, hysterical. The second one is describing something as being lame or being dumb. Those are kind of two separate, but oftentimes get used somewhat interchangeably. Again, those get used a lot in our world and in our society. Most of the time, people aren't thinking about the fact that lame is a term that describes or depicts someone who is not able to walk and dumb is something that is describing a person who cannot speak. They have been so steeped and so and used for long enough in our world that there a lot of times the meaning I think has actually become detached from the origin but that doesn't mean that that origin is not there or that that's still, that that's not perpetuating a bias or an idea that maybe started a long time ago, but that still actually is carrying through the present day. And then the last one that I wanna address for today, and this was one that actually is fairly new to me, and I caught myself using it, and then through following some other, it was actually through following a disabled comedian who did a sketch and was talking about this word that I realized it was actually insulting to people with disabilities. And I was like, we need to remove that from our language. And that is spaz. This is something that I was finding myself saying about my dog when I was walking her and she was being real scattered and kind of running around and I couldn't keep her focused. I was like, oh, you're being such a spaz. And then I saw that comedy sketch about it and then went and did some research because I was like, wait a second, where is this coming from? The comedy sketch just kind of outlined that it was insulting to people with disabilities. I was like, I need to go back and actually do some research as to why. And it's because spaz is short for spastic. And spastic is a term that has been used to reference both people with epilepsy and also with cerebral palsy. So people who may, due to a disability, not have complete control over their fine motor skills or movements and may have muscle tremors or, or, or jerks. And that has been 
labeled or termed as spastic, which then turned into spaz, which then we use in other contexts, but is ultimately still pointing back to a very real physical place that people may be operating out of and one that is outside of their control and not one to be made fun of. Those are, those are our new ones for the day. So just to recap, things that we've already talked about before that we're reminding here, handicapable, differently abled, special needs, challenged, those are all ones that we already have talked about removing for our vocabulary for the reason that it further perpetuates bias or stereotypes around disability. And then the new ones that we talked about today are crazy, insane, hysterical, lame, dumb, and then spaz. So those are the, those are the new four. The reason behind all of this, that's what we're gonna talk about next. Why does this matter so much? And why am I encouraging us to pay attention to it? Why is it good to be sensitive? That's something that I've gotten <laughs> from, from the very few haters that we have, but from the few haters that we do have, the comment that I've gotten most regularly is that I'm too sensitive, which is ironic given the nature of the content that I'm talking about. So I'm not, and also ironic that I actually don't take that personally because that is true. I am sensitive and that's one of the things that I really like about myself. So you can call me sensitive. It's not an insult. It's actually a compliment. So thank you for inadvertently complimenting me on something that you thought you were actually insulting me by. Sensitivity is good. It's part of being human. We take in the world through our, our senses and our sensitivities, and it helps us stay in tune to other people and acknowledging where they're at in their life. So if anything, I encourage sensitivity and not discourage it. But in that, why am I encouraging us to be sensitive about this language? Because I think there could be the tendency for someone to watch this and be like, oh my God, I can't say anything anymore. We get that too, right? You're eliminating everything from my language. Can I just talk? <laughs> Stop limiting my speech. And this is not intended to limit anyone. If anything, it's intended to provide more freedom for everyone, right? So we live in a world where there's specific privilege or rights that are granted to people within specific categories. Non-disabled humans are one of them, where we're in a world where non-disabled humans are typically given privileges and rights that disabled humans are not and that comes down to our language and the things that we speak as well. So it is important. I'm not trying to limit a non-disabled person. I am trying to make sure that there is equality and respect in our language for everyone, non-disabled humans and disabled humans. So that's where this is coming from. Language, and specifically here when we're talking about disability-related language, does oftentimes point back to bias. In these examples that I've given, a lot of times that bias is inherited bias. It doesn't always stem from current or modern day, but it is something that was established in the past that we have brought into the current and the modern day and that we are still using. And so it's important to have education and understanding around the origin and the history of things because without understanding the origin and the history we can even if it's unintentionally and a lot of times it is carry bias and prejudice from the past right into the present and into the future and so what I'm encouraging us to do in this video but also in our work in general is to understand where we've come from to evaluate where we are currently and where we wanna go and look to see what needs to change and be different now so that we can actually get to the future that we wanna have. So in this, wanting to, in our work, right, wanting to create a space and a world where humans with disabilities truly belong and are accepted because they are humans, they do belong. What does it look like to live in a world where disabled humans actually do belong within our society and within our workplaces? and changing our, our language and our understanding around disability is a big part of that. Recognizing that language points to bias, that oftentimes that bias has been inherited and that conscious or subconscious, we have the opportunity to either perpetuate that bias or to break it. And our hope here within this channel and within our restaurant and within our team is to break the bias. That means breaking it in ourselves and then having conversations with other people so that we can break that on a more community or corporate level. So, 
that's the content for today. Thanks for being here. I know this, it's not light. It's not, it's not just like, I'm scrolling through YouTube and this looked interesting and I'm just gonna pause and like fill my time with some fluff. Like, I'm all for YouTube fluff. Big fan of it, love it. I'm definitely a YouTube user. And also, I know that this content is a little bit heavier. It's asking us to look inward, to examine ourselves, to examine our own bias and to see where we're at in the world and how we want to change and move forward. And so I just want to acknowledge you for being here, for taking the time to do that work and for doing it in a space where we don't have to do it alone and we can do it together. So I appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. Again, if you would like and subscribe and comment to our channel, that would be amazing. And also sharing it with your friends and family. That's also a big help. So that's it for this time. We will see you next week. Thank you.